Okay, so we did ta talk about covariant and contravariant vectors in the last lesson and also in, uh, talked about metric um, and one of the things we talked about was the dot product. The dot product for, uh, for two vectors is defined as b a mu b nu g mu nu. Uh, a special case can be the distance between uh, sm the infinity symbol distance between two points uh, which can be written as dx mu dx nu g mu nu. <coughs> this is equivalent to a mu b nu g mu nu. Um, okay and uh, one of the Let's, let's talk about some simple cases. Uh, the, first of all, this g mu nu, it depends on the geometry of the system. As you can see that actually it tells the distance between two, this infinite, infinitesimal distance between two points. So this certainly depends on the geometry. Um, for a simple plane, we know ds square is going to be dx square plus dy square plus dz square, which is not going to remain same for the, for the, uh, on the surface of a sphere. So G menu uh, encodes the distance information between these two, uh, between two uh, points. Um, and if you just integrate that, you get actually, you can go from one point to the other point. For example, let's take dot product of a, a very simple cases. If we talk about Cartesian system, you can see the dot product will be defined as A mu, B sorry well I can write the other way also but let's write it like this a mu b nu g mu nu for a Cartesian system we know that g mu nu is given as one zero 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 one zero 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 one as you can see mu nu runs from one two three which is x y z uh, this is nothing but delta i j uh, also called Kronecker delta. And if you use that, you will see that actually this guy looks nothing but AX, uh, BX, AY, BY, plus AZ, BZ. These are just the numbers and not really some co covariant vectors. Okay, um, as, uh, moreover, uh, you can see that A mu equals g mu nu a nu which means um, the the magnitude of the components are the same uh, this guy has because you see g mu nu is nothing but a unit an entity matrix so it's not going to change the the magnitude of the components but the direction of these three vectors will be different so if you're initial Cartesian system is XYZ which means a plane, a plane stacked over on top of each other, planes stacked on top of each other then this geometry when you take the radians of these you will not get the same um, the, the so you, can, you can say like this if E1, E2 then the gradient will be E3 same as the cyclic law we discussed. Uh, for this case actually E3 and E3 are in the same direction interestingly. Okay but you know that how to find the direction of the um, the contravariant the covariant if contravariant are given it's just a gradient of the contours that define the geometry of the space. Okay um, from uh, you can also there's one more interesting and important relationship and this is you can memorize this moreover g mu nu equals g g mu nu inverse if you write this as a matrix then you can just take an inverse to find the um, the the superscript mu nu from the subscript mu nu and vice versa 
Now we say metric tensor, so basically both these are actually tensors. And what does that mean? Just basically mean they satisfy the following condition. G mu nu depends on the geometry of the um, uh, system and actually transforms like this. what I'm writing. So it's going to be G sigma rho del x sigma over del x um, mu prime and del x rho del x sigma nu. So basically you're going from x to x prime frame. For example, you may be going, you, do, you may be doing just the rotation, which means you can be doing x prime equals x cos theta uh, minus um, y in two dimension. Let's say in two dimension, this can be just simple. I'm just giving an example of one of the transformations. And y prime will be nothing but x sine theta plus um, y cos theta. Okay. Um, now, what this is something that really defines a tensor, and vector is nothing but a special case of a tensor. So, what is so special about this expression? Well, as you see, the new components of G mu nu are nothing but a linear combination of the old components. These guys are not intermixing among each other these two are not intermixing but if you do the same for the Christopher symbols you will see they actually intermix. So the new symbols are nothing but uh, the new components of G mu nu are nothing but a linear combination of the old components of G, of, of G mu nu or G sigma rho and, the, and all it depends and this linear combination it depends all on the way you change the coordinate system. As a matter of fact this whole thing for a vector you will write is you will write v prime mu equals del x rho del x prime mu v this is a covariant vector a covariant component of the vector uh, sigma for this you see this is the transformation matrix which for rotation will look something like cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta as you can see all it does it changes it changes the axis system it doesn't really change the vector itself it just changes the components in such a way that vector which is actually nothing but an arrow is always pointing in the same direction it's not really changing the physics of the problem so these are actually in uh, frame um, coordinate independent things, vectors. Um, similarly, a uh, tensor can also be thought like an arrow. So, um, <clears throat> this is an arrow living in some space. So, let's say if you have G mu nu, it's living in a space of E1, um, sorry, E mu covariant vectors. You can think like that. Or G mu nu is living in a space of contravariant vectors. Um, so these are just components. It's the same vector. So it's some vector, some arrow living in a, a an abstract space defined by your basis vectors, and this arrow actually stays the same. But as you change the, um, the coordinate system and the components change such that the change in coordinate system actually cancels out equally so that the arrow stays the same. For example, let's, let's take an example of um, actually stress tensor. So the stress tensor is sigma mu nu is given as sigma mu nu. This is actually nothing but a stress on the plane. mu pointing so it's an pointing in new direction 
So this is basically a an arrow. This is actually stress tensor, but it's an arrow. So if you transform from some mu nu, nu uh, frame uh, from some x frame to x prime frame, these components will change. But this arrow is not going to change. And this is something that uh, is uh, that is representative of this. That this transformation does not change the magnitude. These transformations do not change the magnitude of the vector. It simply changes the components. If they are mixing, then if, if, if these two should have been mixing, then they, that should have meant that, okay, uh, this guy actually depends on the uh, change of co coordinate system and is not representative of the physics of the problem. Okay, given that, um, if you remember from uh, last class, what G menu does, it simply changes, uh, it simply gives you the, uh, the contravariant, so let me write it down, G menu gives covariant components from contravariant components of the vector. And G and the, that thing actually is just vice versa. It gives um, contravariant from the covariant um, components of the vector. Now, um, um, which basically means that if you have defined your vector space such that, let's say, you assume your coordinate system to be tangents at contours, fixed contours that define the geometry of the system, then if if you'd express these uh, uh, this a vector in terms of e1, e2, which is nothing but tangent to the contour, and e2, which is um, um, uh, again it's an orthogonal system. If you define like this, uh, just taking as an, an as a, ba a basic example, then you express actually them in a contravariant form. But if you uh, if you do not draw tangents to the contours itself, but the gradients of the contours and then define your coordinate system as as the tangent, the gradient of these contours, that's an important statement, then you actually express your vectors in covariant components. Um, so a vector is easy to see for vectors, but using this idea of um, this abstract vector living in sub abstract space, actually vector G menu does the same thing for a tensor. So if you have a tensor like this, let's say um, sigma, a uh, mu sigma, then what it does, it brings down an indices. So this particular component of the vector space is living, uh, it's changed from contravariant to a covariant vector, uh, which a uh, covariant tensor. And what you get is actually so mu sigma. So this is a mixed tensor. This is purely a contravariant tensor or contravariant component of the tensor. And T mu nu is covariant component of the tensor. And similarly, vice versa, you get T sigma mu. So all it does, it produces this mixed components from a covariant components of the tensor. Um, now I have not been mathematically rigorous because I am not really a mathematician, but I'll leave a link in the in the comments in the information section which describes how you can understand a vector in an abstract space composed of uh, basis vectors. So my main idea was to include these two, was to explain these two equations. So um, a metric tensor is something that is, <coughs> that is the raise, that does the job of raising and lowering the, the indices of, uh, of, an, of the component of a tensor. So here is an example. 